egg yolk what is going on viewers of the tube my name is tyler and welcome to the crypto channel that grows on you faster than a marijuana plant in the emerald triangle get ready for some of that higher crypto education because it's time for chico crypto today let's begin the show off with a little analysis of the current bitcoin price now some of you might be shocked and say what you're going to be doing ta or technical analysis Yes, I'm doing TA, but it's called Tyler Analysis, and it's not based on anything besides my own personal feelings and experiences in the market. So looking at the price chart since April, we can draw a line here to show resistance around the 9,000 peak in late May, as well as the nearly 14,000 peak two months back. But we also need to draw a line here to show the support levels when it retraced to 7,500 in the beginning of June, as well as the most recent retracement of around 9,500 just a week ago. Now this cup area is a very important range, so we need to mark this here. And then also the run up and sideways movement throughout May is very important. So we will mark both of those like this. From this TA, I would have to say we are going to ejaculate upwards. The charts, they never lie. Now on a more serious note, looking at the price chart since the nearly 14K peak, the price has been hitting lower highs and lower lows. First low was 10K just after the peak, but it's rebounded back above 13K, a lower high. It then got to a new lower low of around 9,500 about July 17th. Since then, we have once again reached a lower high of just over 12K on August 6th. Now we still haven't pushed down to a lower low, which is a good sign, but there is still that possibility and the bearish pressure is strong. If we do dip below 9,500 in the coming days or weeks, it wouldn't be a good sign. And the bullish momentum in the charts will only begin with a break of the 12K resistance. Although holding Bitcoin is your safest option right now as Bitcoin dominance over the markets has been expanding significantly since April. Bitcoin dominance on coin market cap was just 50% then, while others was 22%. Yesterday, Bitcoin dominance peaked at 70%, while others has come down to just 12%. But is this the actual true dominance of Bitcoin? I actually made a video a while back digging into this, published on March 25th, entitled Bitcoin Dominance Exposed, Coin Market Cap Lies, 80% or 50%. In the video, we argue that there should be a better metric for measuring true dominance since a large majority of coins are wash traded with fake volume. This new metric was called volume weighted cap. And with this metric included, Bitcoin dominance back in late March wasn't 50%, but was actually 80%. Is it just above 50% that coin market cap shows? Well, the volume weighted cap for the last 12 months was plotted for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other coins. And as we can see, Bitcoin based on volume weighted cap has a market share of over 80%. And the trend line shows it is going up. Well, this metric is once again starting to make waves throughout the crypto space with multiple news outlets commenting on the true dominance of Bitcoin, which got started with a Forbes article titled Shock Bitcoin Data Reveals Stark Ethereum, Litecoin and Ripple XRP Warning. In the article, they recognize Bitcoin has hit 70% dominance on coin market cap but this is flawed because of how they calculate market cap dominance. Market capitalization is taken into account without considering liquidity. So a project could easily create a crypto with 1 billion pre-bind coins and do one trade at $3 each. Thus, it has a market capitalization of 3 billion, yet no volume, thus skewing data. And this is very common on coin market cap. An analysis by Arcane Research and Crypto showed what Bitcoin's true market cap is when taking liquidity into account using volume weighted cap. And here are the results. With just using coin market cap data and volume weighted cap, Bitcoin has 76.1% dominance with all cryptocurrencies, including stable coins. But if you exclude stable coins, that figure jumps to 90.3%. Now, if you only use real volume exchanges who have been verified not to participate in wash trading according to Bitwise, that figure jumps up to 91.4% with all cryptocurrencies and 92.4% with stable coins excluded. So Bitcoin's true dominance is a lot higher than people realize, especially after you exclude stable coins like Tether. 
I've been saying this for some time. I predict Bitcoin's dominance to increase even further, and a reversal will only come for altcoins once on coin market cap, Bitcoin's dominance is between 75 to 80 percent, which if using volume weighted cap would put it between 90 to 98 percent, depending on if you included stable coins and only use real volume exchanges. Moving on, now the next chart I would like to bring up is a new one that I just found, and it provides some insights into why the Bitcoin price is currently hanging around the level we are at right now. Now, no single piece of data can perfectly relay all information regarding the Bitcoin price, because it is determined by many factors, like investing supply and demand, as well as mining supply and demand. But you can get a better idea by examining each of these factors. This chart has to do with the mining side of crypto and shows the Bitcoin price in relation to the average creation costs and infrastructure costs from mining. As we can see throughout Bitcoin's history, when the price comes down to the cost of creation, that is usually the bottom of the price. As we can see around March of this year, the price once again touched the cost of creation and it bottomed out and has since been expanding. So what is the cost of creation right now? Here is a nice little map which tells you the cost to mine one Bitcoin in each country based on the average electricity rate. Cheapest places to mine is Kuwait and Venezuela with costs under 1600. China came in at 3645. The United States is way down the list and is basically at break even of creation cost at 10720. Currently there are 32 countries below the current Bitcoin price, meaning their profits to be made at their creation costs. The average cost of these 32 countries is $6,324, which leads me to believe that this is a heavy resistance point, and it's very unlikely Bitcoin will go below this number, unless something radical like a tether implosion was to happen. The final thing I would like to bring up today is regarding a nice little website I found for those of you who need to cash out some Bitcoin, but don't want to go through a website or application that requires KYC. So the best way to do this is through Bitcoin ATMs, and the website is coinatmradar.com, and you can click your country of origin, and it brings up a map. Click your state or region, and it will show you ATM locations close to you. Clicking near where I live, Chico, it looks like there are two, even in the small town of Chico, California. ATMs are great because most don't require that KYC for smaller withdrawals and cash outs, but they do charge typically between a 7 to 10% fee, which is the price you pay to secure your identity and privacy. Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time.